Before we talk about this next part of factoring, I want to talk to you a little bit about what happens when you multiply two binomials. So if this were the seated class, I would have put these problems on the board, and I would have asked students to come up and work this out. And most of them would use what's called the FOIL method. Uh, other teachers call it the double stripute, where they multiply this times this and get that. This times this gives me this. This times this gives me this, and so on. So after the students would multiply these out and put them on the board, I would ask them to start looking at the problem. And that's what I want you to do. Take a look at the answers and see if you can notice some different things. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video for a second and just take a look at the problems and see if you can look and, and see some things that are consistent across all the problems. All right, I hope you took some time to do that. And if you did, you probably discovered some things. You probably noticed every single one of these problems started with an x squared. Because anytime you have x plus something or minus something and you're multiplying them together, the first term always ends up as x squared. Something else you might have noticed is this number. Every time, this number ends up being, or being found the same way. For instance, here, if you look at the number 3 and the number 4, when you multiply those together, you always get 12. Here, when you multiply negative 7 times 4, you get negative 28. Positive 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 9 is positive 27. So when I have two binomials, this last term is always found by multiplying these two numbers together. The last thing you might have noticed was this. Look at this middle number. How can you find the middle number? You might have discovered if I add these two numbers together, I get the middle number. Negative 7 and positive 4 gives me negative 3. Positive 1, negative 6 gives me negative 5. Negative 3 and negative 9 gives me negative 12. So I could just look at a problem like x minus 5 and x plus 2, and I could easily, without doing the middle step, multiply this. I know that these two binomials are going to give me an x squared. I know that the last term is going to be these two multiplied together. And I know that the middle term is going to be these two added together. So I don't have to do the double distributive on this one. It works out that way every single time. So what we're going to do is learn how to factor these trinomials. Notice all of these ended up as trinomials, three terms. So we're going to start with the trinomial and see if we can work backwards and find the factors. So I know that on this one, because this is x squared, I'm going to have x and x. And I also know that these two numbers have to multiply to give me that number. So on a side note, I just write out the factor pairs for 12. These are the different things that I could put here and here that would multiply to give me 12. So then I have to think, which combination of these numbers could give me 7? I'm going to pick 3 and 4. And I want you to check your work here. When I do this outside and this inside together, is there a way that 3x and 4x could give me 7x? And there is. A positive 4 and a positive 3 would give me positive 7, so I know I picked the right numbers. 3 plus 4 is 7, 3 times 4 is 12, so this one's factored. Let's do another one. Let's do x squared minus 7x plus 10. So I know that this is going to be two binomials multiplied together. The first two terms are going to be x and x because that's what gives me x squared. I know the two numbers that I put here have to multiply to give me 10. So I'm going to write out the factors of 10. It could be 1 times 10 or 2 times 5. Then I'm going to pick the combination that could give me a 7 in the middle. 
Well, if I add these, I get 11, and if I subtract them, I get 9. That's no good. If I add these, I get 7. That's what I want. So I'm going to put a 2 here and a 5 here. Now, it doesn't matter where you put the 2 and the 5 because we're going to work on the, the signs. So the outside gives me 5x. The inside gives me 2x. Is there a way that I can get negative 7 from these two numbers? Yes, only if they're both negative. So I'm going to have minus 2 and minus 5. And that would make sense because negative 2 times negative 5 gives me positive 10. If you had the answer x minus 5 times x minus 2, that's the same thing. It doesn't matter which order as long as the signs are the same. All right, I'm going to give you a problem, and then I want you to pause your video, try the problem, and then I'll come. you can unpause it, and I'll, uh, you can watch how I work the problem. Okay, hopefully you tried this one yourself. So I'm going to have two binomials. In this spot, I'm going to put x and x. And then I know in this spot, I've got to think of the factors of 12. So I'm either going to choose 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. But I have to choose the one that's going to give me a 1 here. So the only combination that could give me 1 is a 3 and a 4. So now I'm going to do outside, that's 4x, inside, 3x. But out of this combination, I want to get a negative 1 right here. So the combination that would give me negative 1 is negative 4 and positive 3. So this becomes negative, and this becomes positive. Okay, let me give you another one to try. And again, I want you to stop the video and try it yourself. And then after you've tried it, you'll unpause the video and see how I worked it. Okay, on this one, x x. The factors of 42 are 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14, 5 doesn't work, 6 works, and there's no need to try any farther because if 7 works, I'd be repeating. So I've got to find the combination that gives me 1. So I'm going to choose 6 and 7. So this gives me 7x, this gives me 6x, and I want to get positive 1x, so the 7 needs to be positive and the 6 needs to be negative. And then negative 6 times positive 7 gives me negative 42.